actionfigureresource.com. Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures. Knight Rider, a collecting guide for action figure resource. Knight Rider was a popular American TV series that ran from 1982 to 1986 on NBC in America and ITV in the UK. In England, it had a Saturday evening time slot popular with Battlestock Galactica, The A-Team, Street Hawk, Airwolf and Manimal. The series starred David Hasselhoff as Michael Knight, but the real star of the show was Kit, an advanced self-aware artificial intelligence housed in a nearly indestructible black Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. It was actually a third generation Trans Am, the first having been featured and made wildly popular in Smokey and the Bandit in 1977. The focus on the car and the technology within hit that perfect 80s balance of fetishizing the expensive, exclusive, sporty lifestyle accessory with sci-fi speculation on AI and seemingly effortless cruising cool, embodied by David Hasselhoff clad in a leather jacket and shades. In 1983, Kenner acquired the rights to produce a line of toys based on the show, Kenner of course having shot to action figure prominence with the Star Wars line. This was their years of acquiring a bunch of licenses for other shows and films in order to fill the vacuum that Return of the Jedi would leave them with. The Knight Rider line mainly focused on the car, which for the sake of argument we're going to be referring to as Kit, with a bunch of different small, sleek, black toy cars being created at different scales with different ways of propelling themselves along. Only one figure of Michael Knight was produced. This was a carded bubble blister with the figure mounted on the right, as was tradition, and a photograph of David Hasselhoff as Michael Knight in the background. The figure was 6 inches in height, unlike the 3.75 inch Star Wars line, and had the same 5 simple points of articulation, neck, hips, shoulders. This was created with one particular vehicle in mind for Michael to ride in, namely the Knight 2000 voice car, which would say 5 different things. Bafflingly though, the car came with a Michael Knight packaged in, giving kids very little cause to buy Michael on his own, unless their parents couldn't afford the Knight 2000 and the kid had an existing car in the 6 inch scale, but of course the point of the show wasn't Michael, it was Kit. You can see why this line was short lived. For this reason, very few carded figures were sold and the loose figure that came with the Knight 2000 is far more common, therefore the carded figure has become quite rare and hard to find mint on card. The series was called Knight Rider, but the car itself was referenced on all boxes as the Knight 2000. Adding 2000 to something was a futuristic affectation of the 80s and 90s that was naturally knocked on the head when the millennium rolled around. Most of the vehicles in this series are relatively easy to find on the secondary market. They were well played with at the time, which means that sealed, they command a premium price, often selling for between $100 and $300. Even loose, these small plastic cars often sell for around $50. There was the Knight 2000 crash set which came with a truck, the radio controlled kit, the turbo booster and the whip shifter. Glasslight were a Brazilian company who were licensed to release several lines of figures based on popular American TV series and movies such as TJ Hooker, Star Wars and indeed Knight Rider. However, many of these lines were only released in Brazil and have gone under the radar for most collectors as they were released under the Portuguese titles rather than their better known English titles. The Knight Rider figures and vehicles were therefore released as Super Machina, translated literally as Super Machine. These were the only 3.75 inch Knight Rider figures produced, so have become quite a sought after rarity. The Michael Knight body was recycled from Amigo Black Hole Durant, which was also used for Amigo's Luke Duke, as well as on several other glass light bodies. The figure came carded with Knight mounted on the right hand side of the card and artwork featuring Michael Knight and Kit on the left. The reverse of the card featured a Michael Knight fact file similar to those used on the back of the G.I. Joe cards at the time. He also came with a rifle and a blue hat as accessories. There was a motorcycle set including a unique Michael Knight figure, articulated only at the shoulders, removable from the bike, although he does not stand. There was also a Porsche set released which came with a different and more realistic Knight figure, however the car itself looked nothing like Kit other than being black, and this was the same car that was used for the Glasslight A-Team and Fall Guy lines. The Super Makina line included the car of the future, a helicopter, a hot car, a motorcycle, Michael Knight with a kit and a jeep, the Porsche, a semi-truck and Michael Knight himself. 
The Knight Rider TV show ended in 1986 after four seasons and 110 episodes. In 2002, a Sony PlayStation 2 video game based on the original series was released. It wasn't very good. In 2012, Diamond Select Toys released two Knight Rider Minimate sets, one featuring Kit and Michael Knight, the other Carr and Garth Knight. As with the Back to the Future sets from Minimates, the figures could actually sit in the cars. As well as these, there have been numerous nostalgic re-releases of Kit over the years, including Hot Wheels, Model Kits, and a Diamond Select Pursuit Mode version with a brand new figure. Knight Rider experienced a brief resurgence in 2008 as a new TV series that took place within the continuity of the original show and focused on the estranged son of Michael Knight. NBC cancelled the show after 17 dismally performing episodes. The new car, a Ford Shelby, got its own die-cast models. There were rumblings in 2015 about something called Knight Rider Heroes, which failed to materialise beyond a fan-made trailer featuring the Hoff himself. Hasselhoff has expressed interest in a movie that reunites Knight Senior with his son, presumably recast with someone bankable like Stephen Amell, for a world-travelling Fast and Furious-style adventure. With the right marketing and appeal to multiple generations, this could be a success, which sees, at the very least, a line of gorgeous, scale, die-cast cars in the future. ActionFigureResource.com Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures.